This is this is a kind of a subtle connection to, to the customer forms, uh, and I take it even further with uh, the use of cultural uh, imagery. This is something I wasn't too excited about doing. I thought I was selling out when I started using these cultural images in my uh, concept, but I thought it was necessary, uh, and it did it did bridge my work directly to the culture, which I'm fine with doing. This is the title of the good book. It's um, in the Museum of the North and Fairbanks collection. It's the, the Holy Bible. Uh, I think there's about 15,000 pages in this book. It's cut down in the form of raven. Raven is uh, in the Tlunga culture, a, a form used, um, <clears throat> a figure used in the creation story. very much for having me here today. I've been working in uh, the Vancouver area for, I guess, close to 30 years in various different capacities, not all of which are connected to art, but certainly which are all connected to community. Um, and most of the work that I do is, of course, influenced by uh, my connection as a Chakwakiwak person with the land, the sea, and the air. And so almost all of the work that I do has somehow um, brought me back and anchored me to these elements which we all find very important in our traditional life. And conveying those to a larger mainstream audience um, in contemporary ways. I am, anyways, constantly faced with this kind of um, Methodol methodological kind of a dilemma because basically I'm dealing with uh, the boundaries of my own practice in that you're taking three-dimensional space and putting it into two-dimensional space and then you are um, addition if I um, am evoking my uh, spiritual beliefs I'm also I'm also um, trying to within that two-dimensional space it's representing third three-dimensional space I'm actually representing a multitude of space. I'm actually trying to represent a universe of space within that two-dimensional space. And that's not, you know, every filmmaker basically does that within their own um, self, their own sense of self. Um, there is, um, I talk about that, I remember from someone that when I first sometimes do workshops and do lessons, one of the things I do with students is I challenge them, I say, how do we take, if we look at the world in 360 degrees, if we experience in four directions always in our lives, if, if we are experiencing, you know, um, boundary, boundaryness, if the spiritual and physical, if the spiritual and physical are coexisting, how does that look on camera? Yeah, so I'm interested in place and one's relationship with the actual spaces that we occupy, that we can move through, that we identify with, that we invest in, and the ability of some of us, increasingly more of us, but increasingly less of us at the same time, um, have to move between different spaces. There's a fluidity that we have as um, uh, people with uh, first world passports, if you're lucky enough to have that, with credit cards, if you're lucky enough to have that, that actually uh, positive balance. And uh, what does it mean to move through different spaces given how different cities around the world are competing for attention, competing for dollars to be a tourist, to come and consume something like a festival, like an Olympics, like uh, uh, architecture, like culture, or to a place to park your money, as in real estate, or a place to uh, invest, or to set up uh, corporate headquarters, etc. There is so much competition now, and it's so easy to move things and people and capital and ideas and design around. 